श्री विष्णु सहस्रनाम स्त्रोत्र कुमुद कुंदर कुंद पर्जन्य पावनो नील अमृतांशो मृतवपु सर्वन सर्व मुख There are six names in this verse, six in line one and four in line two. Kumuda kunda ra kunda ha parjanya ha pavana ha anila ha amruta sha ha amruta vapuhu sarvagna ha sarvato mukha ha. Ku ku means earth. Kumuda ha one who gladdens the earth. by irradiating the evil kundaraha one who tore the earth as varaha and to rescue the rescue mother earth kundaha who gifted the earth which was conquered by him as parashurama and gifted to kashyapa parjanyaha rain giving cloud pavanaha the purifier anilaha highly accessible to the devotees amruta shaha distributor of nectar to the devas amruta vapuhu one who has immortal form immortal frame sarvagnaha omniscient all knowing sarvato mukha having faces and all the sides that means seeing everything in everybody at all the time Kundaha means one who gladdens the earth. Mahavishnu made the mother earth extremely happy and relieved by eradicating all evil. He gladdens the earth, or it can also mean he gets gladdened by the earth. It also implies gladdening parts of the beings. Deciding on the earth by giving them wisdom and paving the way for their liberation, moksha. Here, earth should be understood to denote the entire cosmos, which is so dynamic and so scientifically precise. It always obeys the universal laws. The world of plurality is Mahavishnu's. narayana's happy expression of his infinite potentialities it is a fulfillment of the omnipotency omniscience of the supreme being for gladdening mother earth mahavishnu tore the earth as varaha and rescued her from the clutches of hiranyaksha so he is called kundaraha daraha means one who wears or one who tears kum as we know is means earth kundaraha means the one who tore the earth by rescuing as varaha in his incarnation as varaha avatar as the mighty boar in order to destroy the tyrant hiranyaksha who had kidnapped the mother earth mahavishnu had to enter deep into the waters and rescue mother earth this term also can mean one who bestows rewards which are as beautiful as the kunda flowers kunda also means moksha or gnana hence he bestows gnana and moksha on the devotees devotees who have faith in him and who have totally surrendered to him the 807 name describes mahavishnu as one who has gladdened the earth this name 808th name states that he rescued mother earth and the next name 809th name says he is the one who gifted the earth kundaha now let us see what it means kundaha he gifted the earth 
to Kashyapa as Parashurama. Mahavishnu took the incarnation of Parashurama to rid the earth of the Kshatriyas who had become arrogant, who had become evil, who became vicious tyrants and were becoming a menace to earth and all the righteous people on the earth. So as Parashurama, as Parashurama, Mahavishnu first tackled and killed Arthaviryarjuna, representing the most powerful among the Kshatriyas, and then very systematically destroyed all the Kshatriyas, won over all their lands, and the all lands which are won over, he gifted to Rishi Kashyapa. So, Kundaha means both. Daha means gifted. Kundaha, he is the one who gifted the land to Rishi Kashyapa. Kundaha, Daha means slaying also. When we take the meaning as slaying for Daha, Kundaha means one who destroyed all the evil rulers of the earth at that particular point of time. Whereas Kundaha, Daha, if you take the meaning as giving, as giving as a gift, then it refers to same Parashurama gifting the land which was so occupied, so conquered by him to Rishi Kashyapa. Kundaha can also have one more meaning. Kundaha can refer to Kunda flower, in which case this name means, refers to the Supreme as one who is calm, calmly attractive, as beautiful as the Kunda flowers. Such a supreme being, he takes care, he takes very good care of all the beings living on the earth by taking the form manifesting as the rain giving cloud. Parjanyaha. Parjanyaha means rain giving clouds. He who is similar to the rain bearing clouds. Lord Krishna is normally referred to as Nilamyaga Shama or Shama Sundara. So, here he is the one who has the color like the dark cloud, dark cloud or a sky blue cloud. Now, Parjanyaha refers to rain. All the agriculture, all living creatures become extremely happy when they see the clouds, the harbingers of comfort and prosperity. Especially after long and dry summer, everybody is waiting for rains and the rain is most welcome. Now the Supreme Being is like rain. Rain gives nourishment to the crops, nourishment to the fields and feeds the people. Similarly, the Supreme Lord fulfills all the desires of the persons. So, he, like the human, for human beings, he is like rain to a parched earth. Rain also signifies giving cool relief from the heat of samsara, that is samsara tapa or samsara tapatraya. He gives relief from this. Now, after removing the samsara tapa, samsara tapatraya, the compassionate Lord also helps to purify them from the vasanas, which are polluting to their soul. So, he is called pavanaha. Pavanaha means one who always purifies. In Ramayana, Shabri praises Rama by telling him, Smruti Matrena Unatiti Pavanaha. Just by remembering you, just by your remembrance, purifies a person. So, what are the impurities? The impurities of a personality, impaired, our impurities are Basically, the sense objects, the mind and intellect can get impurified, can become polluted by them, by the mind running, by the senses running towards the sense objects. Why does it do so? It does like this because of an egocentric passion, ahankara, mamakara. Because of this, we become slaves 
काम क्रोध लोभ मोह मद मात्सर्य दीज आर द सिक्स इविल्स व्हिच आर व्हिच हैव टू बी रिपीटेड अगेन एंड अगेन मेक श्योर दैट वी डोंट कम अंडर देयर क्लटस नाउ द माइंड हैज टू बी रिट्रीव हैज टू बी पुल्ड बैक फ्रॉम द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स इट शुड बी मेड टू लुक इनवर्स अंतर्मुखा फ्रॉम बहिर्मुखा वी शुड डू दैट नाउ दिस कैन बी डन only by the grace of mahavishnu in that case the mind will withdraw from the external world external senses and gradually settle peacefully in contemplation of the divine nature and the eternal glory of the supreme being by doing this it will exhaust our existing vasanas which are the impurities within our personality since this can be done only with the grace of the supreme the supreme is called pavanaha for purifying devotees he is extremely accessible he is everywhere all pervasive so he is called anilaha anilaha is accessible very much like the atmospheric air the lord is also all pervasive all pervading again like the life giving air he is a life giver everywhere it is only in his presence life can exist now nilaha nilaha means to slip to fall into a condition of non apprehension which is called ignorance or avidya now by adding a the symbol of negation the word nilaha becomes anilaha so when it becomes anilaha it means when this anilaha is used as a name for the supreme being it means the supreme is one who never slips who is always the nature of consciousness because he is omniscient the supreme is also giver of immortality amrutashah giver of nectar amruta means nectar or it also refers to immortality after the churning of the milk ocean by the devas and anavas when finally nectar emerged the larvas grabbed the nectar and try to run away at that time mahavishnu transforms manifests as beautiful damsel mohini mesmerizes them and gets back the nectar and without even before the realize what was happening he distributed it to the devas and he also part of the nectar so he is called amrutashah giver of nectar amrutashah therefore means one whose desires are never fruitless or one whose greatest desire is for the state of immortality this immortality immortality he is prepared he is very eager to confer on all his devotees who come to him he is the one having immortal form also so is called amruta vapuhu immortal form vapuhu is physical form his form itself is immortal He is the external reality, and he is, he is unconditioned by time. He he represents the principle of consciousness. Now, for instance, in the case of mortal beings, we consist of physical, the subtle, and causal bodies. Physical is a gross body. Subtle body is a mind and intellect. Causal body are the vasanas. since the supreme is free from physical subtle gross subtle and causal bodies which alone are perishable the supreme being is by definition by basic understanding the supreme being is immortal there is nothing in him which can perish only mortals have this limitation the supreme is transcending all these states gross subtle and causal states body mind intellect he is beyond all those things 
he is representing all Kuriyaha. He is beyond the three states, states of wakefulness, dream, and deep sleep. The fourth state, Kuriya, representing supreme consciousness. He is unconditioned by time and therefore never undergoing any of the modifications of mortality which is peculiar, unique for the mortal beings. He is immortal. Mahavishnu shines in his absolute glory. The immortal Vishnu is omniscient, Sarvagnaha. Sarvagnaha. He represents the light of awareness, illuminating all the happenings in living beings. Living beings become conscious of their experiences only because of the presence of the Supreme Being in, in their bodies. To know the outer and inner world of happenings, they need again the principle of consciousness. Without this consciousness being in them, they are inert, lifeless, and aware of the world outside. They will not have any concept of a experience at all. Mahavishnu, the principle of consciousness, is therefore called pure knowledge. Because of this pure knowledge only, all other knowledge is possible in every being. That is why they said, once we know, that is the gnayam, what is to be known really is the Paramatma. Once you know the Supreme, then there is nothing else which need to be known. Because all the knowledge which we are aware, the knowledge of the material, knowledge of the world, knowledge of the food, knowledge of people, all the knowledge with which we are familiar in this, our experience, these are derived from the supreme knowledge. When supreme knowledge is available to you, this becomes redundant. So a person having that supreme knowledge is called omniscient knower of everything. The immortal Vishnu, who is omniscient, is depicted as one having faces in all directions. Sarvataha Mukaha. Sarvato Mukaha. Sarvato Mukaha means having faces on all the sides. This is not literally possible. It is not true. What it means is, his vision is there in all directions. That means simultaneously in all the direction he is able to see. That means he is able to see whatever is happening all around him. In all the living beings, all the non-living beings, he is able to know simultaneously. So metaphorically, this is explained as having faces and all the sides. Bhagavad Gita has a beautiful description of the Supreme. Verse 14 of chapter 13. It says, Sarvat Sarvataha Pani Padam Tat Sarvataha Akshi Siraha Mukham Sarvataha Suti Mat Loke Sarvam Avrutya Tishtati Lord Krishna says the Supreme exists in the world enveloping all with hands and feet everywhere Sarvataha Padam with eyes with eyes, heads, and mouth everywhere. Sarvataha akshi, sarvataha shiraha, sarvataha mukham. And ears everywhere. That means sarvataha shrutimat. It loke, loke tishtati. It exists in the world. Sarvam avrutya, enveloping all. Sarvataha pani padam tat, sarvatokshi siro mukham. Sarvataka Shuti Maloke Sarva Mavrutya Tishtati. With this, we have come to the end of this verse. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jutir Gamaya Brutyorma Amrutangamaya Om Shanti Shanti Shanti